was watching videos on YouTube, and uh, I was watching this one video, Drug Dealer Opens Fire on a SWAT Team. And uh, this guy, he made a comment on here, CIA imports lots of drugs into this country to finance the war on terrorists. I got thinking, you mean the CIA's war of terrorism, you know, that they're doing the terrorism. So I got thinking back to Colombia, the Banana Republic, and how Chiquita Banana, they used Colombian generals, mili uh, the military of Colombia, they formed a right wing, a right wing horror squad. They were just doing some horrific violence on uh, you know, Colombian jungle living farmers. I want to jump right to some examples of this, which is in. Para business gone bananas, Chiquita Brands in Colombia. Every time you eat a banana, think about this story. By the mid 1990s, paramilitary chiefs had secured their autonomy through the production and trafficking of cocaine and combined their private armies to form the United Self Defense Forces of Colombia, the AUC. We're, we're going to get to those guys in a minute. United Self Defense Forces of Colombia. The Umbrella Group ruthlessly attacked any civilians su suspected of harboring guerrilla sympathies. If they just sympathized with the people who were opposed to the people that, wait until you hear this, uh, they were opposed to what these people were doing. If you just had sympathy for these people who were opposed to the United Self-Defense Forces of Colombia, let's get right to it. What, what did they do? They quartered victims with chainsaws cut off their tongues and testicles and poured battery acid down their throats hardline AUC commander Carlos Castano defended the sanguine strategy as draining the water to catch the fish oh really chainsaw massacre on Backwoods people for having sympathy because you're a bunch of chainsaw massacring fools of the United Self Defense Forces of Colombia. And um, it, it seemed to me that I had found uh, some type of CIA connection to this a long time ago, and I can't remember what it was. So I had to dig deeper and I had to figure out how these people were connected to the U.S. federal empire. These people who were working for Chiquita Banana, quartering people with chainsaws. To quarter somebody with a chainsaw means to cut them in four with a chainsaw. I could cut them in half and then cut uh, both of the halves in half. So uh, I went out there and I read about how, or actually I found a video, found a video about how the CIA had done this very same thing in Gua Guatemala that Guatemala was a banana republic. The United Fruit Company. That's uh, this video. CIA, Guatemala, and Chiquita, United Fruit Company. Another dirty... Another dirty chapter of U.S. history. Stabbed. Yep, stabbed. Anyhow, um... I don't know, so... I had to go out here. Oh, we're jumping ahead. I have to come back to that. So I went out there and I found out that uh, the CIA activities in Colombia in 1991, which is about when this whole thing started, they, uh, they were training the FARC, which are these, uh, they're the guerrillas, the guerrillas of Colombia. That they're these people that live out in the jungle and they are not cool with how the government is splitting people in four with chainsaws. And so they're fighting back. And, and the CIA was, uh, they, they were funding them and they were training them. Oh, here it is. Um, you see, The Progressive, a journal with a pronounced leftist perfect, uh, perspective, alleged that the CIA 
counter-narcotics efforts were linked with covert support for right-wing death squads. That would be the AUC, the right-wing death squads, the guys who were quartering people with chainsaws. They also link the CIA to the other side, which is the FARC. And these are the people that were fighting the guys who were quartering people with chainsaws to protect their financial interests. And then uh, this right here, SOA, WINSEC. SOA stands for School of the Americas. Colombian paramilitary confirms collusion with School of the Americas graduates. And um, I'll read this out of here. Amongst the military and government officials signaled by Mancuso as collaborators are General Rito Alejo del Rio, General Martin Carreno Sandoval, General Harold Bodoyo Pizarro, General Fernando Landazabal, Colonel Alfonso Mansol Salva Flores, and the current Minister of Defense Juan Manuel Santos. The six men received training or served as instructors at the U.S. Army School of the Americas and have been accused of Mancuso or accused by Mancuso of inciting and promoting paramilitary intervention in certain regions of Colombia. These were the guys that were ordering and training their troops to quarter people with chainsaws and they were trained by the U.S. Army at the School of the Americas. So, uh, Chiquita Banana, this has been going on since 1991. Oh, look at this, Chiquita, they paid both sides, just like the CIA did. The CIA was paying and training both sides. Chiquita Banana was paying and training both sides. Fock was paid between $20,000 and $100,000 a month. Chiquita has also admitted to making 100 payments, totaling $1.7 million to the guys with the chainsaws, or affiliated organizations, over seven years. All right, so I guess this wasn't about the settlement. Yeah, this is uh, saying that they it's gonna be heard in court as of April of 2012, but there's um, something out here that says that uh, Chiquita, Chiquita uh, Court, fine, I guess Chiquita Court case will do. Chiquita terrorism case moves forward. That was only in 2011. Chiquita Banana to face Columbia torture claim. They settled. I think it was for $25 million. You know, they, how many billions of dollars do you think they made shipping all their cocaine out of, out of Columbia in their banana crates? You know, from 1991 until the year 2013. Yeah, and it's still going on. And then, um, you know what, maybe if I put in 25 million here, maybe that'll bring it up. Here it is. Uh, Chiquita, 25 million fine for terror payments. Oh, 25 million for making, you know, what, near a, near a trillion dollars on cocaine being shipped out of Colombia. And then this is the war today. This is uh, FARC, still fighting with the government, still fighting with these people that 20 years ago began to chainsaw in quarters their, their, their parents and their uncles and their aunts and their brothers and their sisters getting cut in quarters with chainsaws by the government of Colombia who was trained at the U.S. Army School of the Americas to do exactly that, to Im implement devastating, torturous warfare. Uh, you know, at the time, it would seem like they were selling these people, like, oh, if you just do this, then you know, you'll, you'll be able to dominate those people so very easily. But no, no. This is actually what, what, it, uh, what the plan was from the beginning. Uh, I'll give you an example out of this. Fuck rebels kill, kill seven Colombian soldiers and blow the peace process. Well, 
you know, there's uh, out of seven soldiers, maybe, you know, maybe one or two of them were sergeants. And so, you know, they got to replace them with some new recruits. And so their pay dropped. And so, you know, they, they're not as costly. And, you know, they're not, uh, they're not taking in that protection money that they used to. You know, and as new recruits, they won't be able to. Columbia soldiers killed fighting FARC rebels. Columbia's FARC frees two policemen. Columbia FARC says peace talks advancing. <laughs> 20 years later. 22 years later. Yeah, so, I don't know. That's what the CIA did. That's what they do. Yeah, they, uh, you know, they, they fund both sides. You know, as people move up through the ranks, they have them you know, kidnapped and killed. And you know, then it's less expensive. You know, the, the whole regime is less expensive because you know, the people that, that they were near the top, they get killed off, and then they don't have to pay their exorbitant salaries.